Hello. There are situations where you need to import an existing network to centralize, simplify and visualize daily operations. What about if the network of interest is a VXLAN VPN multi-site with two fabrics interconnected using a routed network? Here is our current network running in productions and we want to import all networks without any interruptions. The first actions with NDFC is to create the two VXLAN VPN fabrics, an external fabric for the routed intersite connectivity, as well as the multi-site domain used for the overlay networks and VRF extensions across sites. Add the first fabric, give a name, fabric one, Select the template Data Center VXLAN eVPN. For the fabric setting and for the automations, you need to reflect the same parameters as the fabric you need to import, such as the BGPIS number and optionally the resources. Repeat the same action for Fabric 2, give the name, select the data center VXLAN VPN type of fabric, provide the BGP IS number, and remember this is the only mandatory parameters that you have to specify. And you can modify other parameters as you need, such as the resources. Add the, the multi site domain. Select the VXLAN eVPN multi-site template. Under the MSD parameters, uh, select the DCI tab and uh, specify either direct to border gateways or route server. This choice is crucial to attach the overlay multi-site policies to the BGP peering established between the uh, border gateways. You can leave the multi-site underlay deployment to manual Currently, that doesn't change anything for the brownfield import. Finally, you create the external fabric to onboard the core routers. Give a name, CML WAN. Select the external connectivity network type of uh, fabric. Don't forget to specify the BGPIS number of your um, core network. And you can uncheck uh, the monitor mode if you wish to enable the manage mode. However, uh, the interface of uh, the core routers used for the inter-fabric connectivity are already configured. You don't need to automate uh, uh, their respective configurations. Now the three fabrics have been created, you need to import your existing switches and routers with their running configurations in Pratt. Select uh, fabric one, Add the seed unit to discover all switches of the fabric. And more importantly, uh, keep the checkbox to preserve the existing config and uh, provide the credentials. A list of uh, manageable switches appear. Make sure that you select all switches during this procedure. Otherwise, the next time you onboard a switch, it will require a green field input meaning from uh, round up with an array of the configurations of the switch. For this demo, I'm using the same virtual switch, so NDFC is not really able to distinguish uh, each role. Um, we need to manually tell NDFC about our intent by giving the role for each switch. So select the fabric overview and switch tab and assign the role of the border gateways and the role of uh, the spine node to uh, the switch of interest. Do a refresh. As you can see, the topology is now visual as it is automatically associated with each uh, role. Repeat uh, the same actions for the fabric number two. Add the seed unit, the credentials, preserve the config, select the switches you need to manage for Fabric 2,
select the switch tab under the fabric overview set the rule for the border gateways same for the spine node last but not least you need to onboard the routers for the external fabric provide the seed unit the credentials select the four core routers as for the previous VXN VPN fabric you want to associate them with the role of uh, core routers When all switches and routers have been imported to each fabric, you can uh, then recalculate the configuration so that NDFC is aware of your intent. In this case, for the fabric one, there are a few commands generated for the layer three peer link between the two NECAS border gateways that you can ignore for this deployment. Uh, there is no impact concerning uh, the connectivity per se. Recalculate and deploy uh, for Fabric 2. And same for the external fabric for the core routers. So NDFC is now aware of the role of each switches. You need now to move each child members to the multi-site domain. That means moving the fabric one to the MSD fabric. Then the fabric two. And lastly, the, the when. And remember, you can play and display the topology as uh, you wish. Double click now in the MSD scope to open the end-to-end um, -end multi site topology. Then you can see the two VXN VPN fabric attached to uh, the layer three core network. Now, nothing is ready yet. We can check the links under the detail view, make a search for multi site. There is no yet multi site policy associated to any link yet. Now you can reduce this fabric overview windows in the corner, recalculate and deploy in the scope of uh, multi-site domain. Same as previously mentioned, there are a few commands generated for the layer three peer link between each Anycast border gateway that you can ignore for this deployment because there is no impact concerning the connectivity, the current connectivity. After the successful deployment, you can now visualize the overlay links established between the four Anycast border gateways. If you refresh the topology, you see the overlay links established between the border gateway that appear in dotted line. Now the underlay connectivity is established inside the fabrics and between the site. Now you want to check if the user of the networks and VRF has been imported uh, successfully and um, are extended uh, as expected across the two fabrics. From the topology, double click uh, on the network icon. The two production of the networks appear with a new name that contains the VXLAN uh, IDs. Double click on uh, one of the networks that give you a quick overview of which devices uh, the network is attached to in green, which is the expected uh, attachment. You can check uh, the VRF2. VRF tenant one appears. As you can see, NDFC used uh, the uh, initial VRF name given uh, 
via the um, CLI previously. Same as the overlay network, you can visualize quickly uh, the VRF attachment. Finally, you can check that the endpoints learned by EVPN still exist uh, in the control plane. Select one of the leaf nodes in Fabric2, right click to call the show command options. From the multi options, select the show command and enter the layer 2 route mic IP all. You can see the endpoint learned locally and the one uh, learned from uh, BGP EVPN and uh, with the next hop uh, being the Anycast to back address 100 of the border gateways, meaning the endpoints that exist uh, in the remote fabric one. Thank you for watching.